let's dive right in. Underneath the prefab, go to precipitation, full screen snow. I've linked this external intensity function up to the snow here, which is the snow intensity from the snow particle system. This gets used in the overlay profile. All the other pro uh, parameters are similar to the other full screen effects you may have used, like the fog or the clouds. So let's dive right in. <clears throat> overlay intensity is the amount of snow. I'm going to go ahead and get more of the village in view. So you can see the snow, pretty straightforward. Minimum intensity means the intensity will never drop below that, the rendered intensity, even if the actual intensity goes below. That would be great for a cold environment. So let's accumulate some snow. I'm going to set this to 0 0.05, which will accumulate very quickly. Nothing's happening because it's not snowing, so let's bring in some snow. <clears throat> So look at the mountains up there, you'll see it accumulate really fast. And I'm going to go ahead and march it all the way up quickly. So that's reading from the Weathermaker precipitation intensity from the snow. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and melt the snow. So we'll shut it off. And we'll melt it just as fast as it came in. But it never drops below 0.14 because that's the intensity minimum. But if I set this back to zero, then it melts all the way. Let's bring the snow back. <clears throat> okay. So we have these parameters. The overlay normal reducer is how sticky the snow is. So as this approaches negative one, the snow sticks to everything, regardless of slope. So that's basically stuck the snow to everything. If this goes all the way the other way, then the snow can't stick to anything. Basically, a higher value will only stick to flat surfaces. Let's look at the texture. So this is a way to give your snow some kind of appearance. So look down here. As I change this texture, you see other sort of things appearing. Uh, you can change this to certain textures to get a more grainy effect. So like if I use the cliff or some normal map, you can get some really grainy snow. Obviously I want the pet texture I made, so seamless snow is what you want. But you can make other effects. It doesn't have to be snow. And then of course that scales down with the scale parameter. You can tint it. You can change the specular color which is the light reflecting off of the snow into your eye. Let's take a look how specular works. So we've got the sun behind me. So let's assume that it's going to bounce off of these houses and into my eyes. So in order to do that, we'll raise that. And if we raise the specular intensity, you can see it's really bouncing off of those things from the sun into my eye. But as I look here, there's a little bit less specular intensity on the other side. Okay, so let's put that back. You can also change specular power to be really high, which will make the specular area smaller. So if I'm looking down here, you can see there's the specular area. And as you change that, it, it tweaks the value. Now I've got a post-processing effect on here with some bloom. So let's turn that off. You'll see that the specular is quite ridiculous at this point, so let's tone it down. You can see that specular goes into a smaller and smaller area as that raises. Okay, so you'll just have to play around with those until you get something that you like. Great. Okay, so that covers the appearance parameters. Um, I guess we should go over the color here. You can see that that color is kind of the light from the sun off of the snow to your eye. And then you've got the overlay color, which is kind of the overall color of the snow in this case. All right, noise texture. This is a way to vary how the snow looks. So I'm going to raise the noise up and subtract. So this gives kind of a patchy feel so it doesn't look as covered. So this allows there to be non-snowy patches in here. By tweaking the scale, you can make this a lot or a little bit spread out. 
And you can even give it an offset if you want to slide it or a velocity if you want it to move. You probably want a pretty slow velocity. Something really slow. And you can even change the texture. You can see there's only a few areas. So the scale's probably too low or high. There we go. Now we're getting some more. So it's just a way to say, hey, this is, it makes it look a little more realistic. So it's not like this giant snow that's just covered. It gives you the player of your game a little bit more feel like, hey, this is kind of organic. Uh, there's not just a blanket snow everywhere. And the offset just helps to move that along. The very slow offset just moves it really slow so it doesn't look the same every time. So when the player comes back, the snow won't be over this house. It'll be somewhere over here or the lack of snow. Okay, finally, let's move on quickly to overlay min height. This is a simply a way to move the snow up so that it's higher. So let's raise it up. Now the snow is only in the mountains, so if you wanted some snow-covered mountains, you could do that. There's a lot of parameters to vary it here. Let's go over those. Overlay min height noise multiplier just controls how much variety there is from that snow line. The fall off controls how rapidly it falls off. So you'll notice that when that is turned down, that it kind of fades further away. And as that power goes up, then it fades even quicker. So there it's spread out and the snow is less intense further up. But you can bring that back a little bit. <clears throat> Probably increase that fall off a little bit. And there you go. You have a nice kind of smooth transition from no snow to snow. You can play around with these noise textures to see what looks nice for you. With one is pretty good or three. You can add to the noise to move that line again. You can kind of see as I do that, there's this snow line that moves down. And then finally you can scale right on that snow line to make it look a little bit different. And of course that also has a velocity parameter to slowly vary it over time so that it doesn't look the same for your player, especially as they're close up. <clears throat> okay, so let's bring this back down to cover the village. I've tried to make the snow look really nice in daytime and night, so let's let the sun set on Viking Village. You'll notice that the snow is rendering the directional light shadow map. That's the only shadows the snow supports at this time. And let's bring it down to nighttime. Now we've got this nice moonlight. So I think the snow looks really cool day or night and dusk comes and now the snow is brighter again. So I really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Please leave me your feedback. Uh, support at digitalruby.com and uh, let me know what I can do better with Weathermaker. I keep trying to make it the best asset in the world for sky and environment and now snow, I guess. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.